our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Then the Jews began to complain about him, because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They were saying, Is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he now say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered them, Do not complain among yourselves. No one can come to me unless drawn by the Father who sent me, and I will raise that person up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, And they shall all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father, except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Very truly I tell you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. And I had 
done all kinds of reading and had looked at the statistics and the geography and the history of the Native Americans, especially the Lakota Sioux. And I thought I was ready to immerse myself in the three months of life on the reservation in Roosevelt. And I got there, and as you might imagine, I planned and God laughed. I said, you thought you were ready? Let me show you what you were ready for <laughs> that day. I had all the facts in my head. I had no idea the level of poverty and despair that I was about to live in for three months. Life on the reservation, especially the Rosebud, is similar to third world conditions. You can have 10, 15 people living in a 500 square foot house. Three meals a day is no hurt. Many of the children's bellies are extended because of malnutrition. Many of them are being raised by extended families, aunts, uncles, grandparents, because biological parents are either incarcerated or left by God. The average age expectancy is about 47 years old. It's not what it's like here, even though it's the continental US. And I was not prepared for what I experienced. And so my job on the reservation for three months was to prepare the mission groups who came in, was to prepare them to have a wonderful week to respect the customs of the, of the tribe and to get them acclimated so that they can have a good experience and the native tribe can have a good experience. And so one of the first things we taught them, don't ask a child how your weekend was. Don't ask a child what you did last night. Things that we would take for granted, questions that we ask all the time. Because these children come from homes that are very much unlike ours. Their homes are not safe. Their home life is not pleasant. And so when you ask them these questions, you force them into secrecy because they can't answer you. And you also stir up the foreign memories of their homes. After I got done with my three months on the rosebud, I got back in my car and I drove to Swanee, Tennessee to finish my last year seminary. And I crossed through those stone pillars that say welcome to the domain of Swanee. And I drove past that big church, All Saints, with all the gold inside. And I thought, what in the world is this? How can there be such inequality in this country that we call the United States? And then I made the mistake, I went to Piggly Wiggly up the street, right, to restock the pantry. And I got in the cereal aisle. And I just wept. I sobbed. Because I looked at that point at 15, 20 different varieties of cereal. At a reasonable price, 350, 4.5 a box. Now on the reservation, they're eight, nine dollars a box. Because the prices are so inflated. They might have two or three different brands to choose from. In little Swanee, Tennessee, they had over a dozen, 15, 20 a year. It's a whole aisle, right? Cereal is two sides of an aisle. How can this be? How can this possibly be in this country? So it didn't take my classmates long to realize I had changed. I was different. I was bitter. I was angry. I was angry. And so, shortly after that, I got called back to Atlanta, to my home parish in Snellville, Georgia, to give a presentation on my time at the Rosebud. 
which I did with great glory and great honor to be able to share the story of the Lakota with people that I love and that I knew. What I didn't know that day is what I was doing was bridging two communities whom I loved dearly, both of them. Because my presentation and my personal stories of my experience on the Rosebud stirred their hearts, stirred their compassion, and stirred a little bit of anger within them. And so shortly after that, they began a campaign, and they collected brand new gloves and scarves and hats. Put them in a box, shipped them off to, to the Rosebud Reservation. Three, four hundred pairs. Brand new. For most of those children, they never received anything brand new until they got that box. Year after year, now we're going on, I guess, maybe four years now. Every fall, St. Matthews collects brand new hats and scarves and gloves, blesses them, and puts them in a box, and mails them off to Rosebud Reservation, where it's a big deal to get handed out. It may be a crumb, it may be a crouton, but there's hope. It's the bread of life. Do I know whether these gloves and hats are going to change anybody's life on the rosebud? I don't know. But what I do know is that there's some child on the rosebud who knows in the fall that somebody in Snellville, Georgia, Loving on them just a little bit. That maybe they're not totally alone. Maybe there is somebody in the white land who really does care about them. Will it change the course of their lives? Only God knows that. But it's a way to break through a community where suicide is the number one death. They buried at least three young people in the past couple of years. You don't know what kind of love can be exchanged in a hat or a scarf. So God's not asking us to bake a whole loaf of bread. He's asking us to just find one crumb. One crumb and share. Because crumb by crumb, we will be the bread of life. 